This hopeless romantic might have been hopeless for a reason. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Ted from How I Met Your Mother was the worst. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at times Ted Mosby, the protagonist of the sitcom How I Met Your Mother, was disrespectful to women, insensitive to his friends, or just an all-around jerk. We all got it. Ted's a schmuck. <laughs> Number 10. When he propositioned an engaged woman. Do you want to have dinner with me Saturday night? Oh, that's very sweet, but I'm actually getting married on Saturday. Ted Mosby likes to see himself as a starry-eyed believer in true love. But after visiting an online matchmaker, he becomes discouraged and thinks he will never meet a woman to marry. Wait, then you're still getting married? Of course I'm still getting married. But we're a 9.6. Excuse me? When he sees the only woman who is a match for him has already been set up, he sneaks onto the matchmaker's computer and steals her information, then tracks her down and uses personal knowledge he learned from the stolen information to try and win her over. He then berates her for marrying a man she's only known a few months, while he is currently pursuing an engaged woman he just met. Wake up and smell the hypocrisy, Ted. Look, don't you think you're being a little impulsive marrying a guy you just met a few months ago? Don't you think it's a little impulsive for you to proposition an engaged woman you don't even know? See, we're both impulsive. Number nine, when he threw three parties. If only I knew her schedule, I could arrange a chance encounter. From the second Ted met Robin, he was desperate to get her attention, especially after their disastrous first date. But more on that later. So in an attempt to not freak her out by being too forward, Ted decides to invite her to a casual party instead. Yeah, because nothing's as casual like inviting a hundred people over just to mack on one girl. But when Robin can't make it, Ted throws three parties in a row that weekend in the hopes that Robin will eventually show up, completely disregarding the fact that Marshall, the guy he calls his best friend, has a huge paper due on Monday. I guess there's no chance your two-dayer turned into a three-dayer. It did indeed. The party continues tonight. Number eight, when he didn't know anything about Stella. Does she like to cook? Um, actually, I don't know. Oh, uh, what's your favorite color? Don't know that either. Maybe the gang should have gone through with their Stella intervention for Ted. Only after he has already proposed to Stella and is planning his life with her, does Ted stop to think about all the things he doesn't know about her. You know, I've actually never seen Star Wars. She's never seen Star Wars. And that's only because Marshall makes it painfully obvious to him. Dude, you don't know anything about the woman you're marrying. During your engagement is probably not the best time to be learning basic facts about each other. And it's doubly irresponsible because Stella has a young daughter to consider. Ted almost killed Stella because he had no idea that she was allergic to peanuts. But can you guess my secret ingredients? Peanuts? Yes, how did you know that? Number seven when he wanted Robin to get rid of her dogs. Whose moisturizer is this, Ted? Um, my sister's. So, in other words, some girl you went out with. Robin feels uncomfortable with all the stuff Ted has kept from past relationships and asks him to get rid of it all, which admittedly is a bit of an overreaction. But when Ted finds out that Robin's five dogs came from her past relationships, he wants her to get rid of them too, which is completely ridiculous. Just admit it. It was a little hypocritical of you to make me get rid of all my stuff. But what do you want me to do, to Get rid of my dogs? Especially because she does eventually give up the dogs for him, in spite of a unanimous vote in her favor from the group, only to find out that he lied and kept all of his stuff. Yeesh. I gave my dogs away to my aunt. You what? Number six, when almost every word he said was correcting someone else. I literally want to rip your head off. You mean figuratively. No, I literally mean literally. It's a surprise Marshall didn't pick up on this annoying trait earlier, since apparently Ted has been a pretentious jerk since they were roommates in college. All right, first of all, my parents live in Ohio. I live in the moment. In an episode centered entirely around the gang finally seeing all of each other's annoying habits, Ted's glass-shattering flaw is that he can barely get through a single sentence without correcting someone else. You guys uh, want a drink? Uh, I'll just have a water. Mm, technically, water is a drink. The gang even eventually had an intervention for Ted's obnoxious grammatical habits. No one likes a know-it-all, and Ted is the chief of the grammar police. You're always correcting people. 
You That's totally absolutely do that. right. Number five, when he tried to make Zoe give up her fight. Problem was, some people didn't want the Arcadian torn down. Even bigger problem, they were led by my girlfriend, Zoe. Ted knew that Zoe was trying to save the Arcadian when he met her, and she knew he was trying to tear it down to build a new skyscraper. But they still managed to become friends and fall in love. I have the chance to build a skyscraper in the best city on Earth, and who's the one leading the charge to kill that dream? My girlfriend! Zoe left the captain to be with him despite their differences. Then when they got together, Ted constantly blamed her for trying to ruin his dream, even though they were already on opposite sides when they met. What about my lifelong dream of not seeing every beautiful building in Manhattan bulldozed? He was the one constantly flip-flopping between sides and trying to get her to give up her fight. Why should she be expected to give up something important to her when he won't? Sometimes things have to fall apart to make way for better things. Number four, when he told Robin he loved her on the first date. Uh, I know this is a long shot, but how about tomorrow night? Yeah, what the hell? Seeing your two best friends get engaged after 10 years of unwavering love would be enough to make anyone fall a little in love with love. But Ted gets a little too swept up in the romance when Marshall and Lily get engaged. The Olive Theory is based on my friends Marshall and Lily. He hates Olive, she loves them. And in a weird way, that's what makes them such a great couple. Perfect balance. He's blown away by Robin when he first sees her. And on their first date, he tells her he loves her, completely freaking her out. I think I like your nose. I think I'm in love with you. What? <laughs> what? What? Even if you do believe in love at first sight, how exactly did he expect her to respond to that? They didn't even know each other yet. You love me? I can't believe I said that. Why did I say that? Who says that? I should just go. Number three, when he dumped Natalie on her birthday twice. Hello? Natalie, it's Ted Mosby. Go to hell. Natalie gives a pretty succinct description of this horrible act. Ted dumped her over her answering machine on her birthday, then tracked her down three years later, thanked her for another chance, and dumped her shortly after, again on her birthday. Maybe we should just Call it a day. But you're awesome. Okay, bye. And the only reason Ted even asked her out again was as an experiment to go through his greatest hits to see if there was someone he looked over who could possibly become the mother of his children. I'm not the one for you! I'm sorry, I just, I, I, I thought the mature thing to do it's would be- It's my birthday! Yes, I know, I didn't realize it's that it was- It's my birthday, and you're telling me I'm not the one for you? He deserved every bit of the ass-kicking he got from Natalie. Lily got it right when she asked why he couldn't just leave that poor woman alone. <laughs> Number two, when he taught his kids to turn a no into a yes. If, if you're not allowed to date a patient, I'll just, I'll wait until these 10 sessions are up, and then I'll, I'll ask you out then. Well then, fair warning. I'm gonna say no. The entire story Ted tells his children about the numerous women he slept with before meeting their mother is, let's say, questionable. But this moment in particular is extremely troubling. Barney, of all people, tries to tell him it's a bad idea. You can't turn a no into a yes, Ted can't be done. When he's pursuing Stella, Ted does not take no for an answer and continues trying to date her even after she tells him there's no chance, not just because she is his doctor, but because she is focused on her daughter. I've had so much fun these past 10 weeks. Oh my God, this is worse than the laser. I have a daughter. Rather than teaching his son about respecting women, he ambushes Stella with a surprise date and passes it off to his kids as romantic. You only have two minutes, right? Right. Okay. Wanna uh, go on a two minute date with me? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. Okay. <laughs> Naked man works. I just had decent sex with an awful human being. I am back. If you ever, ever see this face, Barney, run and don't take a picture of it. She will punch you and you will cry. Well, stop it. She's not worth it. You got to get over that Grinch. But I didn't say Grinch. I said a bad word. Number one, when he cheated on Victoria with Robin. We're making out. Mm -hmm. This right? is crazy. Right? Right? Ted and Victoria were magical. But as Ted puts it, she's not Robin. Interestingly, when Robin realized she had feelings for Ted, but he had already met Victoria, she did the mature thing and stepped aside. Expect from me, it's Robin. 
I, Victoria's great, but it's Robin. But Ted lied to Robin, saying that he and Victoria broke up so that he could hook up with her, and blamed Victoria for being late with her phone call. I'm exhausted from pretending I'm not in love with her. I think that makes this okay. Oh, please, you just want to get laid. As if this wasn't bad enough, Ted would later go on to screw Victoria up even more by running away with her when she had cold feet on her wedding day, knowing how painful it was when he was left at the altar. What a jerk. You, me, riding off into the sunset. Any thoughts? One question. FDR or West Side Highway, what's the quickest way to the sunset? Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.